In this episode of Bear TV News, seniors prepare for graduation. UPike's FMA department welcomes a new faculty member, and students get the chance to become immersed in a different culture and religion. Hello, UPike viewers. Welcome to the May edition of Bear TV News. I'm Dominique Mims. And I'm Nick Collin. We are covering the most recent news around UPike and the surrounding community. <clears throat> Food and fun come to mind at the thought of Hillbilly Days, and this year was no exception. The city of Pikeville held the 43rd annual Hillbilly Days Festival in downtown Pikeville as the streets were filled with vendors, locals, and tourists. Reporter Kyle Nagy was on site capturing the event. The city of Pikeville held its 43rd annual Hillbilly Days Festival throughout the downtown streets on Wednesday, April 10th through Saturday, April 13th. Thousands of locals along with tourists came from all over to explore the city and to eat food, enjoy music, and go on rides. Well, you know the food. <laughs> food is always good. Everything. I love it all. Oh, we like seeing our friends. I, I like the music. I, I'm a more or less old country guy, so you know we got a lot of old country that's played here. And oh, this is a flower that I carved. My granddaddy taught me to do it when I was a little boy. I was 10 years old when he taught me. Actually, it's it's a hickory stick, and I carved this out of the stick. And that's that's what I do. And I do a lot of talking and a lot of crap. But anyway, I have enjoyed Hillbilly Days up here. And uh, a lot of people know me. A lot of people don't, but that's okay. They'll find me out. In the midst of the fun on Friday, April 12th, a storm swept through the city. Although only lasting about five minutes, the storm flipped tents and caused destruction to many vendors beyond repair. And uh, we'll do the best we can here. I hope you can still hear me. Reports from WYMT claimed that one person had to be taken to Pikeville Medical Center and four others refused treatment. Thankfully, no one else was severely injured. Although many vendors were beyond repair and could not finish the weekend, the people attending still enjoyed the festival. Reporting from Hillbilly Days, I'm Kyle Nagy with Bear TV News. Thankfully, the storm did not cause a significant amount of damage and Hillbilly Days was a success once again. As the last few weeks of the semester approach, students reflect on their time spent at UPIC. For graduating seniors, May can be a bittersweet month as they leave UPIC behind and begin the next step of their journey. As May arrives, seniors are more anxious than ever to put on their graduation robes and walk across the stage with diploma in hand. Students, seniors especially, are constantly busy with deadlines and assignments. Some may be sad about leaving their time at UPike behind. Others, however, feel differently. I feel pretty confident about my last semester. I was just ready to graduate, ready to get it over with. Uh, I do feel like it has prepared me and I'm just excited to pursue uh, my future plans. Honestly, this semester has been pretty stressful. I have been really excited for graduation, but I've been also very overwhelmed. Figuring out the next step isn't always easy. Some choose to take a year off. I'm going to get a job first before starting on my master's program because I already have some student debt and I know getting my master's will add on a lot more student debt and I want to be able to have that job so I can have money to live on and also money to put towards uh, my loans. While others choose a path, that hits close to home. My plans after graduation are to go to Western Kentucky University where I've been accepted into their communication disorders program uh, to obtain my master's degree. Um, I'm really excited about that because it relates to the struggles that I have in my own life and I'm ready to help people that struggle with the things that I do. Though every UPAC student has different goals, our journeys begin and end at the top of the 99. The commencement ceremony will be held at the East Kentucky Expo Center on May 4th at 2 p.m. Congratulations to all graduates. With the expansion of social media and video platforms such as YouTube, broadcasting and video production are growing fields. 
The UPIC FMA department is seeking to enhance their program through the creation of additional courses accompanied by new faculty members. Brian Wood, owner of Wood's Cobbler Shop in Pikeville, will bring skills and knowledge from his past profession in video production and animation to the university. Reporter Dustin Fidel has more. With new classes coming to the UPIC FMA department, so does a new adjunct professor. We spoke with him at his shop to tell us more about his class and his hopes for the future of the FMA department. As far as me coming in as an adjunct, um, that experience has been pretty cool. I've, I've done motion graphics for the last 10 years, um, but I, I've never really thought about teaching I've, uh, until Andrew contacted me and, and asked if I would uh, lend some of the skills that I have to the, to the FMA department. And so I'm, I'm really excited to show other people what I know about motion graphics and, and animation and all that stuff. I got into it uh, basically when I was eight years old. My parents showed me Star Wars. It was one of the most mind-blowing moments of my little childhood. Uh, it was just the coolest thing I'd ever watched at, up until that point in my life. And I just took that time from eight until probably 19 or 20 and just basically learned how to put all those special effects together. And the, the interest was just out of this world. Like I wanted to do everything that they were doing. And for some reason, as a little eight-year-old, I had the patience to learn how to do some of the stuff. I was, there was no Google. There was no, oh, how do you look this up? At the time when you didn't know what an answer to a question was, it was, I wonder how you do this. And that was it. There was no, <laughs> you didn't continue on with the line of questioning unless you went to the library. But now, I mean, you can Google anything. You can look up anything. And that's what I've been doing. That's how I've learned mostly everything that I've put together. I really want to see the, the FMA department grow in numbers and in, and in skill level. I want to see these, these uh, young adults going into the program interested in, in video and film and, and growing their skills. It's something I've always been passionate about ever since I was young, and I want to see uh, other people get passionate about it and kind of grow a community of people that are creative and, and want, to, want to share their talent with the world. For Bear TV News, I'm Dustin Fidel. For more information regarding the FMA program, contact Associate Professor Andrew Reed at andrewreed at upike.edu. In March, the Campus Activities Board provided students with free tickets to the Road to WrestleMania that was held at the East Kentucky Expo Center. To continue the fun, the Campus Activities Board also gave students the opportunity to watch WrestleMania as they hosted a viewing party of the matches. On Sunday, April 13th, the Campus Activity Board hosted WrestleMania. This event was held in Christmas Auditorium and we spoke with the host about what the event is all about. Today we put on uh, WrestleMania. Uh, that's a WWE, one of their biggest events um, that they showcase and it was a very good show. Um, typically WrestleMania is about a four to five hour show. This one ran a little bit closer to six hours. Um, it's an event that we put on for students here so that they can get out their rooms, uh, students who like wrestling, uh, some closet students who do like wrestling but don't really want to talk to other people thinking that, oh, they might feel some kind of way. For Adam, wrestling is more than just an event for him. It's something he is very passionate about. Um, I'm 36 years old and I've been watching wrestling, I would say, probably a good 30 years. So um, just seeing the evolution of wrestling is great and just seeing that people are still interested in it. Um, with that being said, this was one of the biggest ones just for the fact that WWE has crowned their first black uh, world champion, Kofi Kingston. Um, that was one of the biggest hits here at um, the event. We had a lot of students here that cheered for that. For future events like this, make sure to look for flyers and check the UPIC events app for more. I am Sean Haynes reporting for Bear TV News. Remember to check the UPIKE Events app to stay updated on all events hosted by the Campus Activities Board. The Religion Department here at UPIKE is offering students a chance to step outside of their comfort zone with many new experiences. Recently, students learning about world religions were taken on a trip to a local Zen center right in the middle of Clay City to learn more about traditional Chinese Buddhism practices. Many people have misconceptions about spiritual practices that aren't their own. Fortunately, Summer Bingham was able to show some of her students what it's like to practice Zen Buddhism on a recent trip to Clay City. So we went to the Furnace Mountain Zen Retreat Center where students met with Jigetsu, who has been meditating for 40 years. 
and they learned that Zen is really about just being present in the moment. So uh, the Zen practice can really be boiled down to right here, right now, this is it. The students on the trip really had a great opportunity to bond. I think they got a lot closer, a lot of friendships were made, and they were really able to take the practices of Zen and reflect on where that fits in the course. While the students were bonding and learning about each other, they were also able to learn why the temple was located in Eastern Kentucky, making it exceptional for the Zen practice. You know, and some of the students commented on that. They commented on how odd it was. They felt um, kind of transported to a different culture right here in our mountains. And I think being able to know that that diversity exists here and to celebrate that diversity and that difference in thought um, is really good. It's, it's part of education. It might be in the middle of nowhere, but I feel like it's definitely a good experience. Uh, it's a good way to get uh, some exercise too. Also the view at the end, walking up the mountain. I thought that that was a, a peaceful way to get things off your mind. Summers is, a, is an amazing teacher, and I think if anybody wants to get into any religion class, like definitely take this one. For more information regarding courses taught by Summer Bingham, contact her at sbing00 at upike.edu. On April 4th through the 8th, the UPike Film and Media Arts Program hosted its fifth annual film festival in Booth Auditorium. The four-day event showcased over 50 films from around the world, and over 30 individuals were there to represent their works. Those individuals participated in Q&A sessions after the screening of each film. Also, a live table reading was conducted of the three award-winning screenplays. Festival guests were honored with an awards banquet sponsored by the City of Pikeville, where $1,000 in cash prizes were given out. The festival concluded with a screening of the award-winning documentary, Hillbilly, which featured a live Q&A with co-director Ashley York. The festival returns next April and will begin taking film and screenplay submissions by the upcoming fall. If you've been to any home UPike basketball game, you've had the pleasure of being entertained by UPike's very own jam band. These students are proof that hard work and dedication pay off. Without music, life would be a mistake. UPike has some of the hardest working musicians in the area, constantly playing for the school. But soon, these students will get to have their very own gig as UPike's jam band. About a year ago, when we were putting the concept of the, the instrumental music department together, there was one thing missing, rock and roll. The band has fun when they play, but still maintain professionalism thanks to the direction of Dr. Phillips and Mike Bell. We start picking three or four or five of them to play a gig, and that's when we rock out during the basketball games, the home basketball games. We actually started in uh, late September. Uh, we had our first game in, um, in November, and they played 46 basketball games. <laughs> so they've, they've had plenty of practice. After playing so much for the basketball team, these musicians are ready for the spotlight. It's actually its first and main function is to play at the basketball games. Uh, but what's really neat is as they grew and as they got better, uh, we realized just how talented they were. So right now, they actually get to do their own concert. Jax Howie, reporting for Bear TV News. Students interested in the band can contact director Dr. Michael Phillips at michaelphillips at upike.edu. Now it's time for the sports update with Willie McLeod. So Willie, it's been quite the year for UPike Athletics already. Yes ma'am, yes, ma it has. We've had a lot of things go on this semester and uh, we're getting ready for graduation. All right, tell us all about it. Hey everyone, I'm Willie McLeod with the UPike Sports Update. The baseball team fired on all cylinders in their last game against Alice Lloyd, winning 16-6 in seven innings. Jay Vincent hit his second straight home run in the fifth to give U-Pike a 15-6 lead, needing just one run in the seventh. The Bears got three singles from Pastor Sanchez, Tyler Menrath, and Luke Libanecki. Football is back, well, at least for a week. 
The U Pike Bears football team had its own annual spring game to show off their preparation for next season. March 30th, U Pike held the annual spring game for the football team. The team was separated in half, competing as the orange and gray team. Well, the difference in between the fall and the spring, in the spring we pretty much worked with the younger guys and getting them some reps, getting them to learn the offense, um, pretty much um, getting them prepared for the upcoming season. My biggest focus going into spring game, uh, springtime is basically recruiting, recruiting. Um, building for the future, um, replacing the guys that we lost um, this past season. Um, but spring, uh, springtime is mostly recruiting. Fighting to keep the Orange team from scoring, Adonis Abels will help the great defense make a stand with the big deflection to Tellus Kennedy for an interception in their own end zone right before half. First spring game was pretty solid. Uh, kind of, you know, was you know, kind of jittery, you know, in my movement and stuff and being out there. But it was pretty good, pretty solid, and I, I felt like I, I, I did pretty good. And I, I, I you know, st started in a solid place, so I'm, I'm good with where I'm at. You know, going back and fixing the mistake, you gotta, you know, be kind of mistake free and. Just go out there and you know loosen up and just you know just just play. Uh, I can definitely improve on uh, my blocking. Um, you know just kind of just you know not being in my head and just you know just playing and just letting the game come to me and um, being more consistent catching the ball. Abel wasn't the only young guy making plays in their first spring game. Alex Sanders would give the great team a boost with the 40-yard run that was set up the first touchdown of the game by Willie McLeod. The great team would go up 10 to nothing with the field goal from Will Chandler before the Orange team would get on board. Jalil Elamine gave the Orange their first points with the strike to Artis Clark to make the game 10 to seven. Still fighting, the Orange team would come up just short of a win, losing to the great team. U Pike saw ball split games with Cumberland, Kentucky. The Patriots taking game one and the Bears taking game two. The games look identical to each other, with the scores being 7-1 to one in the first and 6-1 to one in the second. In the second game, Hannah Skaggs would only give up six hits and an unearned run in the first inning to push her record to 12 wins and 10 losses on the season and drop her ERA to 3.54. The U-Pipe women's soccer team is already gearing up for next season. The women's soccer team has struggled the past couple of seasons, but with hard work and practice, they are hoping to turn the tie in the upcoming 2019 season. The 20th of March 2019 marks the first day of spring and the first day that the U Pike women's soccer team moved from practicing inside the U Pike gym to outside at their practice field. The girls haven't had the greatest success over the past two seasons, however they are hoping to turn things around this upcoming fall season which begins in August. All of their spring training is currently ongoing which is hopefully laying the foundations for success for their fall season. With such a big freshman class incoming, the girls are stepping up the quality of their play to set the high bar for the new players and show them what playing soccer at U Pike really means. We spoke with head coach Gary Walford and asked him what he was most excited about for this upcoming season. Well, it's only fitting that today is the first day of spring, so obviously we're happy to be outside playing the sport on its natural surface, but some of the things we're looking forward to for next fall is just to see how this team uh, has come together. The past two years have not been the most successful as far as wins. This team has really taken on their shoulders to, to find ways to get above that, and it's shown toward the end of the last season and it has shown during the spring season because during our individual sessions as a team, they've dedicated themselves. You can see it when we play. So I'm really looking forward to finding out, you know, if we can break the curse, so to speak. Uh, next fall, when we bring in our new players, we can progress from what we've done this spring. We hope that the women's season this upcoming fall will be a spectacle for all to see. So be sure to check their schedule at upipebears.com to know when they're playing and when to come down and support them. I'm Aaron Avon, Bear TV News. In the Mid-South Conference Spring Invite, U Pike Women's Golf finished third as a team, while Boo Newsom and Ellen Kehoe finished second and tied for third respectively. The Bears only finished nine strokes back of first place Cumberland, Tennessee, and five strokes back of second. Third place marks the best finish at an MSC event in U Pike Women's Golf history. Newsom shot a three over 75 her only round to finish second. Kehoe finished in the three-way top for third, one stroke behind Newsom with a four over 76. This has been your Bear TV News Sports Update. I'm Willie McLeod. Thank you for that, Willie. And uh, as you mentioned, we have graduation coming up. We're going to be losing a lot of our seniors, including you. 
Correct. We are. Uh, well, actually, I may have an extra year to play. Oh, really? Which is surprising. <laughs> but we do have a lot of good young guys who are prepared. So. You think the freshmen and new recruits are going to uh, be able to fill the shoes of our seniors? Oh, most definitely. We prepared them, and I think they'll they'll do better than what we did. It's good to know that U Pike Athletics is in good hands. And thank you. Thank you. This has been the last spring 2019 edition of Bear TV News. Thank you for watching. I'm Dominique Mims. And I'm Nick Collin. We hope everyone has a great summer, and we'll see you in the fall.